Everywhere you look, it seems a heart attack is just waiting to happen. More than a million heart attacks a year. That's one just about every 30 seconds, just in the United States. If you haven't had a heart attack yourself, you likely know someone who has. But I've got a secret to share. With what we know right now, we could see the last heart attack in America. I've been investigating this for over a year. I've got lessons to share, things you need to know, things your doctor may not tell you. I was lucky I didn't die of a heart attack. Former President Clinton, like so too many people, people was busy. Wait. And for years, he ignored warning signs from his heart. But in 2004, during an exhausting book tour, there was something different. I had a real tightness in my chest when I was getting off the airplane. And it was the only time I'd had it unrelated to exercise. We're here outside New York Presbyterian Hospital. In just a couple of hours, President Bill Clinton, former president, is uh, scheduled to undergo surgery. So I immediately went down to our local hospital, and they uh, did a test. They said, you got real problems. They hustled me down to Columbia Presbyterian, and uh, they confirmed the determination that I had serious blockage and needed the surgeries. The doctors immediately knew options were limited. The 58-year-old Clinton needed to have his chest opened, his heart stopped, and surgery performed. There's no medical treatment for reversing the obstructions that have already formed in his blood vessels. I got Hillary and Chelsea there, and all I remember is it was happening fast, and everybody who cared about me was scared, and I felt rather serene. I thought, oh, gosh, we dodged a bullet. I didn't have a heart attack. On Labor Day in 2004, Mr. Clinton had four blood vessels bypassed. Starting this morning around 8 o'clock, he had a relatively routine quadruple bypass operation. Uh, we left the operating room around noon, and he is recovering normally at this point. So I think right now everything looks straightforward. There was that period when you're just not sure you can come back. That bothered me. That and the pain. If it happened to him, could it happen to you? What about me? I'm a pretty typical guy in his early 40s with a family history of heart disease. So I decided to go on a mission to never have a heart attack. But how? When people talk about trying to end heart attacks uh, in, in the world, or in America at least, one of the ways to do that is to take a look inside the heart, see what's happening before someone ever, ever has a problem. And that's what we're going to do here today. You're actually going to look for what in my heart? Yes, for calcium, which is part of the atherosclerotic process the plaques in the heart and if you're heading for a I've heart never attack, had a problem but you're, you're looking for it anyways yes and if you're heading for a heart attack in 5 10 20 years you will already have plaque it's a lifelong process that's dr. Arthur Agatston you may recognize him as author of the South Beach diet books but he also invented the coronary calcium scan that's the test I'm having done in case you're wondering he doesn't make any money from it we all know plaque is bad, blocks your blood vessels. Plaque is formed by LDL cholesterol in the blood, the bad cholesterol. Think of it as L for lousy, building up on the walls of your arteries, forming plaque. It can accumulate slowly over time, narrowing the blood vessels, like something building up inside a pipe. This narrowing in the blood vessels leading to your heart can cause chest pain, called angina. It can also cause a heart attack. Did you ever wonder how seemingly healthy people can have a heart attack? This may surprise you. Most heart attacks happen in people with no symptoms, in people whose arteries are less than 50% blocked. Here's how. Cholesterol can cause unstable bubbles or blisters of plaque to form in your arteries. These can be incredibly dangerous. Most are covered by a cap, but inflammation and stress can cause the cap to thin and rupture, resulting in a clot that blocks the flow of blood to the heart. Robbed of oxygen, the heart muscle can't function properly. Heart attack. 
And therein lies the key, Agatson says. We can now find clues before heart trouble gets dangerous, even before the first symptoms. Well before you get to the stage, President Clinton was. Bill Clinton, former president, arguably had at least eight years of some of the best health care in the world. It was after he left office, he had significant heart problems. That surprised a lot of people. How could it be that he could get this level of health care and still have heart problems? He had multivessel disease, so he had a lot of plaque. That plaque certainly could have been identified with a heart scan uh, years before. I don't want to sound glib, but why wasn't it done? Because again, you'd assume you know the White House doctors, the President of the United States, uh, they'd be doing that for him. Why yeah, not? It was not the standard of care then. Uh, we are past that. I decided to ask Bill Clinton about that. And it turns out he did have a coronary calcium scan just months after leaving office. But the technology was so new then, doctors weren't quite sure what to do with the results. They said I had some calcium buildup around my heart that put me uh, basically in the top third of risks, but they said there's no evidence of blockage because I'd done so well on the stress test. For a few months before this happened, I noticed whenever, uh, not, not every time, but often when I would do rather strenuous exercises, there are some really hilly areas in the town where I'm. When I'd climb those hills, I'd have to stop and take a breath. I didn't take it seriously because every time it happened, I just lowered the exercise level, got my breath back, and it was never painful. It was just tight. If this isn't good for my heart, I don't know what is. <laughs> By the time he felt the first symptoms, that tightness in his chest, President Clinton's heart disease was well advanced. It had been decades in the making. You don't die with your first plaque. You develop atherosclerosis blockages really your whole life um, for many, many years before it causes a heart attack or a stroke. And what Dr. Agatson told me next should ring a bell of hope for just about anyone who has ever worried about a heart attack. It doesn't have to happen. One of the best kept secrets in the country in medicine is that doctors who are practicing aggressive prevention are really seeing heart attacks and, and strokes disappear from their practices. It's doable. And you're saying we, with what we know right now, we don't have to have any more heart attacks in this country? I'll never say not any, but the great majority. Yes, absolutely. It's the biggest killer of men and women, heart disease in this country. And it's completely preventable. Coming up, more tests to gauge my heart attack risk. And can you really tell who's a heart attack waiting to happen? Also, can the right diet make you heart attack proof? We'll meet a woman who's betting her life on it. With a family history of heart disease and a lifetime of bad eating habits, President Clinton told me he was a heart attack waiting to happen. But what does someone really look like who is about to have a heart attack? You probably wouldn't think this guy. Tom Bear, 53, thin, seemingly healthy, and one step short of a full-blown heart attack. In fact, he's checking into this hospital in Lincoln, Nebraska for open-heart surgery. It's an important lesson. What you see on the outside doesn't always match the inside. In this instance, it obviously uh, closed down quite a bit. And he was Surgeon Ed Rains shows us the striking images on the angiogram of Bear's heart. You can see this tight narrowing right there where that closes down. So that limits the amount of blood that can get out. And then you've got a real tight narrowing right up here where that vessel on the side takes off and then another narrowing here. And then you've got a pretty tight narrowing there. All the major blood vessels supplying blood to the heart blocked. Yes, that is the very picture of a heart attack waiting to happen. He's at risk for heart attack just because of the amount of plaque that he has in there. Could he have prevented? Like me, Bear has a family history of heart disease. And that's why four years ago, he underwent the coronary calcium scan that we just learned about. His results were not good. The score was, 100, uh, was 111. Zero is the best. Over 100 means an increased risk of heart attack, even sudden death. And you may breathe. You can go ahead and rest your arms down if you'd like. It's going to take me a couple minutes to check these images, make sure we have everything we need. 
Bear went through the test again this year, and his score was up to 243. The average score for someone his age, five. I was doing some exercise about three weeks ago, um, a jogging routine that I do, and uh, made it about three-tenths of a mile, and then had the classic uh, symptoms, the chest pain, and then the pain down the, down the left arm, and shortness of breath. What room is this? This is room four. As in the case of Bill Clinton, Bear was told he had no options by the time he saw Dr. Raines. Within days, he would need bypass surgery. In this instance, you know, this is sort of a, what I would consider a medical failure. In other words, he got this, these narrowings in plaque despite our efforts to, to prevent it from, from progressing. And, and my goal would be, is even though I'm a surgeon and treat these end-stage things, is, is to not have them get to this point. From a public health standpoint, we have to do this, because this bypass operation is going to be very expensive. He's not kidding. Average cost in the US, $112,000. And there are about 450,000 procedures performed every year. Total price tag, more than $50 billion. Our money would be better spent years ahead of this to prevent the, him from getting to this point. Prevent ever getting to this point. That is precisely my goal. For me, and for you, the last heart attack. Dr. Arthur Agatston has guaranteed he can see trouble coming years in advance, well before I'd need surgery, if I do the right tests. So here's where the blood is flowing, and this is the, the lining. Agatston is using an ultrasound to look for plaque in the carotid artery leading to my brain. A blockage here can cause a stroke and would be a sign I'm at increased risk for a heart attack. Unless you do the imaging and the, the advanced testing, you are really playing Russian roulette with your life. Your body needs cholesterol, actually makes it. It's in the lining of every cell in your body. The liver sends out LDL cholesterol, and when everything works right, the good HDL scavenges excess LDL and brings it back to the liver. You also get cholesterol in foods, things like meat, french fries, eggs, butter, desserts ice cream. Your cholesterol number is a good measure of what's in the blood. But here's the problem. It doesn't tell you if it's building up in the walls of your blood vessels, forming plaque. And it's the plaque that causes heart attacks. If you look in the coronary care unit and people have heart attacks, the cholesterol levels of those who have heart attacks versus those in the street who have it are essentially the same. That is kind of surprising, right? Because you'll hear people exchanging their cholesterol numbers. And if it's low, they seem quite proud of it. If it's high, there's cause for concern. You say that that's, you know what, you're not looking in the right place. That's essentially useless. Here's what does matter, Agatson says. The size of your LDL, or bad cholesterol particles. Larger LDL particles don't pose much of a threat because they pass through the blood vessels without sticking. It's the smaller LDL particles that are more likely to lodge in the walls of blood vessels and cause a buildup of plaque. If they're small, you can have a lot of little particles that penetrate the vessel wall more easily. There are a lot of little old ladies in their 80s with very high cholesterols who have squeaky clean vessels. They have very large cholesterol particles and they don't get into the vessel wall. So you have to ask about the size of the particles as well when it comes to bad yes. cholesterol. That's why Dr. Agatston wants a blood sample. I don't think anybody likes getting their blood drawn. Oh. He wants to find out if I have a lot of small LDL particles, a sign that I could be prone to building up plaque no matter what my overall cholesterol number is. Coming up... I was incredibly lucky that something more severe didn't happen. Lessons from former President Clinton. And the pictures don't lie. I learn if my arteries are young or old. Time to find out what fate has to offer sure. me. And a controversial diet. This 66-year-old woman says she's eating her way to heart health. We're never going to end the epidemic with stents, with bypasses, with the drugs, because none of it is treating causation of the illness.
Spend just a few moments with Bill Clinton, and you'll see he's a changed man. For starters, he's a lot thinner than he was as president. When his half-hearted exercise routine really out of shape, though. and his taste for fast food became the stuff of parody. Your McNugget is released from Great Britain to Somalia, intercepted by warlords. Dr. Dean Ornish has studied and written about diet and heart disease for decades. Mrs. Clinton asked me if I would work with uh, the, the chefs who cook for the, for the first family, and then began working with President Clinton directly as one of his consulting physicians. The president did like unhealthy foods, and we were able to put soy burgers in the White House, for example, and to have him uh, get foods that were delicious and nutritious. But even with Dr. Ornish's help, in 1999, after his annual physical, the White House doctor said the president had put on 18 pounds since a checkup just two years earlier. That's the problem. It all looks good. While diet and exercise can go a long way, most doctors will tell you to get to the last heart attack in America, there is more. It's rather public knowledge that he was going through some rather stressful times during that time. And it just goes to show you that information alone is not sufficient. We need to work at a deeper level. We need to work with the underlying stresses that people are experiencing, the loneliness, the isolation in many cases that people are experiencing. And then taking the weight towards the balls of the feet. That's why Dr. Ornish's prescription for heart patients oh, includes yeah. yoga. The mind will begin to quiet down. Meditation and group sessions at his institute in Sausalito, California. I came to Vermont determined to get my cholesterol down <laughs> with low-fat Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia. We now know when Bill Clinton was president, he passed his annual physicals, but his heart disease was still progressing, undetected. I asked his cardiologist why. One lesson is that uh, checkups are not a substitute for lifestyle. As president, Bill Clinton never got any of the advanced imaging, like the coronary calcium scan or the ultrasound of his carotid. Those are tests that are now more readily available to everyone. And Clinton was also getting a false sense of assurance from the testing he did have. And it was the year he left office when he had the first symptoms of heart disease. In 2001, when Chelsea was graduating from Stanford, I started running again. I wanted to get in good shape, and I thought, this is crazy. I couldn't run more than three quarters of a mile without stopping and walking 100 yards and getting my breath back. Three years later, the bypass operation with Dr. Craig Smith. But President Clinton's heart troubles were not over. When the devastating earthquake struck Haiti in 2010, President Clinton flew to Port-au-Prince to support the relief efforts. I spent time with him and saw that he looked tired, not himself. Got all pale and weak. And then uh, I got all these letters from the, you know, the doctor crowd saying, yeah, it's normal because fools like you won't do what you're supposed to do because you don't eat like you should, you don't exercise like you should. The doctor said it was a mechanical failure of the bypass and he needed stents to open the blocked artery. I got so lucky they were able to put those two stents in, you know, and, and fix an artery that had been, it was pretty bent and ugly. The goal of the treatment, and I think it will be achieved, is for President Clinton to resume his uh, very active lifestyle. Uh, this was not a result of um, either his lifestyle or his diet, which have been excellent. But Dr. Dean Ornish didn't see it that way. And so I wrote him a letter and I said, you know, the friends that mean the most to me are the ones that tell me what I need to hear, not necessarily what I want to hear. And you need to know that your genes are not your fate. That, and I say this not to blame you, but to empower you. And I'm happy to work with you to whatever extent you, you want to move forward in that way. And we met a few days later and he said he was ready to do it. I essentially concluded that I had just played Russian roulette because even though I had changed my diet some and cut down on the caloric total of my ingestion and cut back on how much of the high cholesterol food I was eating, I still, without any scientific basis to support what I did, 
was taking in a lot of extra cholesterol without knowing whether my body would produce enough of the enzyme to dispose of it. And clearly it didn't, or I wouldn't have had that blockage. So that's when I made a decision to really change. I should have done it after the surgery. Coming up, President Clinton transforms his diet to save his heart. And what is life like after heart surgery? Tom Bear's painful recovery and his complications. Walked about three-tenths of a mile, and it was excruciating. Also, she said no to surgery and yes to food as medicine. We'll tell you if it's working. Most doctors eat meat because most Americans eat meat. And so if they don't really see for themselves or their own families why it might be a good idea to cut back or even cut meat out of your diet altogether, then they may not be so inclined to recommend it for their patients. Anybody who's able to do that diet can have dramatic success. The problem is, is that many people are unable or unwilling to make these changes. And so in my practice, I try to take you know, baby steps one step at a time. And Dean Ornish says when it comes to diet, it's not all or nothing. One of the interesting findings in all of our studies was that the more people change their diet and lifestyle, the more they improved in direct proportion. Efforts like these come at a time when obesity and diabetes, both risk factors for heart disease, are at all time highs. And in the next 20 years, the American Heart Association predicts 33 million more Americans will have heart disease, unless we change. And we're very concerned because we are seeing the risk factors associated with cardiovascular disease increasing. Would you call yourself healthy now? Well, I think I'm healthier than I was. You know, I'm, I lost 20-something pounds. All my blood tests are good. All my vital signs are good. And I feel good, and I actually have believe it or not, more energy. I seem to need less sleep. Once you begin making these changes, most people find they feel so much better so quickly, it reframes the reason for making these changes from fear of dying to joy of living. And joy is what's sustainable. Left leg up, bend it at the knee, reach back with your right hand. A year into her diet, a year after her heart attack, Kent says she feels great. Simply walking tired her out 12 months ago. Diet and exercise can make someone like me, low risk for a heart attack, even with a strong family history, well, that's encouraging. I don't think there's any question that uh, not only could we be past our last heart attack, but the vast majority of people, even my age, if they're prepared to change their diet, exercise a little more, could actually reverse a lot of their blockage. Heart disease could be as rare as malaria today if we simply put into practice what we already know.